recording? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Abba in the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire Math Department. I'm Sarah, and I'm Math Co President. And we're here to explain why the Math Club t shirt is cool. Um, our audience is people like the Chancellor, the Provost, the Deans, like people who I'm giving the shirt away to, and um, maybe people who don't necessarily remember Euler's formula from the 1700s. Um, so let's show them the shirt up close. So Sarah, Sarah's here modeling the shirt. We have this, that looks like a hyphen, but that's not a hyphen, that's a minus sign. Do you know what 2015 minus 2016 equals? You got it, minus one. And so we have negative one here to the power of and. And that equals e to the i pi to the power of and. The power of and. <laughs> So let's explain why negative 1 here is equal to e to the i pi, in case you forget. And of course, once we prove that equality, we raise both sides to the power of and, and the equality still holds. The power of and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's begin. <laughs> um, so basically, this is the story of solving equations. So where did, um, for instance, if we had... If we had uh, x plus 3 equals 0, you might say solution is, what would you say? Negative 3. Yeah, she would say, Sarah would say negative 3. She would say that not only because she's the math club president, but because it's quite obvious. Um, if we had x squared minus 1 equals 0, you didn't know you'd be on the spot, did you? No. Um, <laughs> we would look at this equation, and I don't know, an algebra student might add 1 to both sides, and then blah, 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 and then eventually come up with x equals what? We add, put the 1 on that side, and we have x squared equals 1. And then to solve for x, what would you do, Sarah? Square root both sides. Yeah, square root both sides. And then we would observe, though, that there would be two solutions to this. So Sarah would say that. What else would Sarah say? Minus 1. Yes. <laughs> there is two solutions to this equation. Um, so these ones were manageable. But what if we slightly alter this to this one? And we set this equal to 0. x squared plus 1 equals 0. Um, this should have a solution if we were, you know, if there's any justice, there should be a way to solve this. But then when we do the technique, and then we take the square root of both sides, on the left we get x, and then we get plus minus the square root of minus 1. Now this is a problem because... We're looking for a number, like when well, we have the square root of 9. We're looking for a number. If we multiply it by itself, we get 9. So 3 and negative 3. That's quite natural. But now we're looking for a number upon which we take, uh, we multiply it by itself, we get negative 1. And you all know that's impossible. A needed proof would be, look at this graph. There are no negative elements in the range of this function. Quite clearly, right? Sarah and I agree. So you agree too. So this is really an impossible concept. So they've decided to say um, and invent the imaginary number, and it's called i. See, board management. i. And we're going to define this to be the square root of minus 1. So this is the imaginary number. It's the square root of minus 1. So back to the shirt. Let's see the shirt again. So here's that character i. I guess we're familiar with pi, and then there's another transcendental number e, approximately 2.71818, etc., etc. Um, decimals don't repeat because it is an irrational number like pi. Um, so we have e, we have i, we have pi all together. And how is it connected to minus 1? Because that's why the shirt is cool. I mean, the shirt would be cool anyways, but that's why the shirt's really cool. <laughs> okay, so let's get to that story. Uh, Euler's formula. Euler's formula. So, imagine a complex plane where we have the real axis and we have the imaginary axis. And by the way, a prerequisite of understanding this talk is just to um, high school. That should be enough. Uh, you may not learn of the complex plane in high school, but you're learning it now. 
So we have the unit circle called the unit circle because it has radius 1. So at this location we have the point 1 comma 0. Here we have the point uh, 0 comma 1, uh, negative 1 comma 0, and lastly uh, 0 comma negative 1. So, but if this is the imaginary axis here, uh, these values are all I values. These values are all real values. So really, we can associate this thing to the, the y coordinate is the imaginary axis. We can associate this to the value 0 plus 1i. In other words, this is just the number i. We can associate this to negative 1 plus 0i. Uh, in other words, this is just the number negative 1. That's very important <laughs> in this talk. This is not a talk. Sorry, this is the video to friends at UW to explain why this shirt is cool. And my shirt. Well, they're identical. I have a medium. What size do you have? Small. Small? Okay, they're not identical. <laughs> so, okay, so this one is just 0 plus negative 1i. In other words, this is just minus i. And lastly, we have 1 plus 0i. In other words, just a number 1. So, Euler has his formula. If we have take theta to be this angle, then we know from basic trigonometry, utilizing SOKATOA, we remember that from maybe high school, that the, uh, for instance, the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is 1. So what we have here is that the sine of theta is equal to opposite, which is this length, um, the opposite over 1. So solving for, for that, this opposite here is just the sine, sine of theta. Similarly, just to move it along, this is the cosine of theta. So this coordinate in space would be the x value cosine theta, comma, sine theta. Now the miraculous formula of Euler is the following. And I'll write this in large font because it's so fatalicious. E to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So theta is our parameter. And we're going to, let's see in this shirt, why don't we let the parameter theta equal, guess what? Yes, you're absolutely right. Well, pi, pi, they said. You're so clever. Awesome. Okay, so we let theta equal pi, and what do we get? Then we get e to the i pi equals cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. And so we remember a little bit from our formulas for sine theta, and sorry, our graphs, and cosine theta. You see those graphs all right? So sine theta, this is the value pi. Here, this is the value pi. So cosine of pi is at the point negative 1. So this is negative 1. Sine of pi is equal to 0. So this is plus i times 0. So this is equal to negative 1. Hence, we conclude the miraculous result that e to the i pi equals minus 1. Which is trivial if we just looked at this graph and knew that exactly pi radians, or 180 degrees, would plant us in the complex plane at this coordinate, which we associate to minus 1. So that's why the shirt is cool. Maybe we should go up to the right, approach the camera. Oh, wait, wait, I've got, sorry. <laughs> Hair's in the way. At least it's blue and gold. Yes. All right, um, maybe we should pan back and then glorify the thing and say, any questions? Well, no. <laughs> I guess we're done. Should we go back? Should we? Oh, we go back. Yeah, shut me.
But we can't see the camera. Well, we'll can take turns looking. You look. And then I'll look. Oh, okay. Good enough. <laughs> um, pause. Cancel. Wait, pause.